Since the site's inception, 4chan has been messing with people on the internet. And while in a lot of these cases it's just innocent trolling, some other times it becomes much more dark than that. And today we'll be talking about the dark truth of Jesse Slaughter. Our story today begins on the website Sticky Drama. Though it's long since fallen off, it was once a popular forum to talk about internet celebrities. We start here because on July 10th, 2010, a poster accused the vocalist of the band Blood on the Dance Floor, Davi Vanity, of having sex with an 11-year-old named Jessica Leonhardt, known by her online alias, Jessie Slaughter. This girl was a minor online celebrity at the time, with her being active on both MySpace and Stickham. The post alleges a sexual relationship between the two. Surprisingly, much of the form condemned the young girl rather than the adults in the situation. Jessie was quick to deny the allegations, responding to the threat only two days later. She states that her and Davey were only friends, and then angrily revealed that it had elevated to the point where her mother had seen the accusations. She typed in a forcefully quirky, nearly unintelligible style, not uncommon for her age. Her response tells the poster to shut the F up, and that her mom was on the phone with Davey right now. The thread quickly turned vitriolic as Jessie continued to stoke the fire with her replies. This would become a theme. As more and more posters began insulting her, she decided it would be best to address them in a video on her YouTube channel, calling out these haters. Haters, stop hating on me! You're just jealous because I'm perfect and you're not. Nobody else can be this pretty with no makeup on. None whatsoever. In this expletive riddled rant, she exclaims that despite reading all the comments, she doesn't really care. She then makes a handful of inflammatory statements, such as the now infamous, If you can't stop hating, you know what? I'll pop a Glock in your mouth and make a brain slushy. The video is filled with many vulgar but quote-worthy moments, all delivered by a literal elementary school student. So naturally, it wasn't long before it caught the attention of 4chan. On July 14th, 2010, the video was posted to the site's random board, as the head post of a You Rage You Lose thread. Needless to say, the board lost their temper. The video quickly went viral, as members of the board flooded her comments with jokes, insults, and doxing attempts. It wasn't long before the video exploded on Tumblr as well, where it was spammed thousands of times. Once again, Jessie attempted to combat the trolls, this time creating her own Tumblr blog and arguing with these dissenters. She attempted to destroy them with witty comebacks, though most usually fell flat or made no sense. Jessie, being a child, was very trusting and gullible, and in spite of this ongoing flame war, she continued to accept all friend requests on Facebook. This apparently included requests from accounts that were not so subtly referencing pedophilia. It wasn't long before B frequenters infiltrated her Facebook, gaining access to all of her personal information. They were able to find her email and home address, to which she was promptly doxxed. They began spamming hate emails, and bombarded her household with pizzas and UPS packages. They even went as far as to hire prostitutes on Craigslist to visit her household. This was enough to set Jessie, and perhaps more importantly her father Jean, over the edge. That night on July 15th, Jessie uploaded her tearful response video which has since become infamous. Okay, you guys, this is Jessie Slaughter here, and you I know just what? wanted to say that you guys have ruined my life. First I'm gonna tell you right now, dad. this is from her father, you bunch of lying, no good punks, and I know who it's coming from, because I've backtraced it. And I know who's emailing and who's doing it, and you've been reported to the cyber police and the state police. Right. So you one better one. write one more thing, or screw with my computer again, you'll be arrested. You End of conversation from her father. And if you come near my daughter, guess what? Consequences will never be the same. You lying bunch of p See, my house has been like this. Everybody's been, everybody's been posting stuff about me, okay? This speech instantly cemented itself in meme status. Numerous famous quotes spawned from the video, including done goofed, backtracing, and cyber police, 
which propelled it into infamy. Soon, single-serving joke sites were launched to mock the speech, such as youdonegoof.com and becauseibacktracedit.com. Gene's speech single-handedly boosted their exposure tenfold. As for the validity of his speech itself, his threats were not entirely unfounded. As 4chan would soon learn, police had actually been alerted to the situation. The next day, trolls began spreading misinformation regarding Jesse, using what's called Google bombing. Essentially, it is the falsification of Google search activity to manipulate the site's autofill. They Google bombed so the search Jesse Slaughter given PCP by her father would appear. This claim, of course, was entirely baseless. The hoax was picked up by some news organizations, however, as they debunked it in an attempt to combat its spread. On July 16th, Gawker posted an article discussing the controversy, titled How the Internet Beat Up an 11-Year-Old Girl. This would lead directly to the following development. Two days later, it was reported that Jesse had been placed under police protection. This came after days of constant prank calls, hate emails, and death threats. Allegedly, criminal investigators truly were backtracing the phone calls, and a court ordered her to stay off the internet for the next three days. The family was now under constant police surveillance. Later statements from the Florida Police Department revealed that their investigation was not related to threats of violence. In fact, their spokesperson even stated that there were no death threats or threats of harm in any way. According to them, the investigation was in regards to pornographic images of Jesse that had been referenced in prank calls. With the family under constant police surveillance, things inevitably slowed down. The only footage to be released for the next few months would be from a third-party source. A tiny chat user who had logged into the same chat room as her recorded a heated argument between Jesse and her father. It was uploaded to YouTube in August. Jessica, I don't trust anybody! 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 Especially your friends! <laughs> you can tell them all that on the internet. They're a bunch of untrustworthy little brats! And they lie about their ages and they blow off the internet. Um, Every one of them Dad, is fired! It's 12. Lie! After this, there was silence. And for quite some time, people thought that it was the end of the story of Jesse Slaughter. But little did they know, things were going to get much, much worse. We'll find out about this after a word from our sponsor. Devil May Cry 5 is an over-the-top, fast-paced action game now available on Xbox One. The game has non-stop action, amazing cutscenes, and really fun gameplay, but don't just take our word for it. DualShockers calls it one hell of a good time and Game Rant calls Devil May Cry 5 the perfect action game. So come and play it for yourself. If you haven't already, now is a perfect time to get involved with the franchise, because it seems each game in the series is better than the last, and Devil May Cry 5 is no exception. And remember, games play best on Xbox One. For a while, things seemed to be finally dying down for Jesse's family. But in February of 2011, Jesse's father was arrested on charges of child abuse. According to police reports, Jean slapped Jesse in the mouth during a heated argument, causing her to have a bloody and swollen lip. He claimed that he had only struck his daughter after she had punched him. He was quoted as saying that the blood on her face was fake and theatrical blood. He pleaded not guilty and was released on a bond of $5,000 the following month. The family was dysfunctional, and this became clearer as time went on. An article by The Smoking Gun would reveal Jessie's history of behavioral issues. She had thrown temper tantrums at the thought of internet access being prevented, and she had a history of posting suicidal messages on her Facebook. Despite her lack of access to the World Wide Web, the incident continued to affect her real life. A police report showed that her notoriety had led to a bomb scare at her school. A little before this, Jessie appeared on the television program Good Morning America. She discussed how the videos and the reaction to them changed her life. She also revealed that she would begin counseling. I think that it's completely wrong that people would taunt somebody to some degree that they would actually kill themselves over it. And that's actually completely wrong and whoever is doing it 
should be locked away for a really long time over it. Now Jessie Slaughter, which is actually her screen name, is about to enter counseling. But these viral videos may just end up haunting her forever. For Chan, in preparation for the mainstream attention they'd be getting over this GMA interview began Operation Bipolar. The idea was that they would pretend 4chan was a family-oriented website. Included was an image sticky to the top of the board, sarcastically encouraging a family-friendly community. The moderators set the Good Morning America theme to play in the background as well. Later on, a video of Jessie was uploaded by one of her real-life friends. Here she apologizes to the band Blood on the Dance Floor for accusing them of sexual abuse. This is strange, however, as she never seemed to be the accuser, having denied the allegations right from the start. Jessie then states that she is now in foster care, after being put through several mental institutions. She was still given no computer privileges, hence the different uploader. At around the same time, Jessie's father, Gene, suffered a massive heart attack in his home. He died at the age of 53 years old. It's possible that the immense stress from the controversy had an impact on his health. Four months later, in January of 2012, Jessie appeared to have finally received her computer privileges back. She quickly created a new YouTube channel and Tumblr account. Upon returning, she became a rather typical browser. Oh, and she was also planning on changing her name to Damien. As if things couldn't get any worse, it was revealed that in 2017, the now infamous YouTube star was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and was extremely sick and wheelchair bound. With all that being said, however, there is something to be mentioned about a sinister undertone to this entire story. Remember how this all started when Jesse was first accused of having an intimate relationship with Davi Vanity? Well, since then, multiple accusations have come out against the vocalist. Allegations with much more substance than before. In an article from the Huffington Post, the author alleges he had spoken to a dozen women, who all claimed the musician had sexually assaulted them from 2006 to 2015. If these allegations are true, this puts a new disturbing light on Jesse's story. The possibility that a child was not only abused by an adult, but bullied for the allegations after the fact is very disturbing. So there you have the story of Jesse Slaughter. And I think it goes without saying that if you have kids online, you should probably protect them from things like this. Also, keep your 11-year-olds away from bands. So with that being said, I'll end the video here. And until next time, thanks for watching.